for item 7.1. We have three um, <coughs> supplementary materials. Oh, one, yes. yeah. the secondary suite report, yeah. 7.1a, 7.1b is the appendix, which includes writing file hour review and OCP review. And then I'll put this in 7.1 as well, Chris, the, sure. this review. Yeah. What <coughs> oh, did you said that this morning? Where did you say 7.2? Yeah, I said it this morning. But, sure. Um, Great. 7.2? Okay. They're all going to look at them all together. Okay, 7.1C. So I'm not too worried about And then also we have um, Urbanix, uh, the housing assessment yeah. representative coming. She won't be able to phone in until 10.30, so yeah. if we can move her to the very end. Yep. That's at 10.35. Okay. That's all delegations. Okay, I move to approve as amended. Thank you, Maureen. All in favor? Yeah, approve. Thank you. Okay, uh, adoption of minutes. If everybody had a chance to look at the minutes from last time, any comments? If you want to take a minute just to quickly skim them. <coughs> Head scratching 
at the last council meeting on in terms of uh, recommendations from this committee mm -hmm. to council. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm observing. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Moving along, so we've got action items. Uh, page eight. Uh, so, um, number one, uh, Council Nicholson, Daniel, and Fritz create a page that catalogs potential sites for housing on municipal land. Is that ongoing? Because that's with the Mayor's Standing Committee, kind of, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Essentially. Okay, so ongoing? Okay. Uh, number two, next agenda, oh, the work plan. I think that must have got blocked because we have quite a full agenda with other things. So if we could plan that for our next meeting, which I'm guessing we'll discuss at the end because it might not be the first Friday in January given that that's like the third or something. Mm -hmm. So let's bump that to the next agenda and at the end of the meeting we'll confirm that date. Um, uh, October, um, oh sorry, that, go ahead. That will work in terms of the um, council strategic plan. Oh good. It's, it's being bumped to okay. January as well. Thank you, thanks for that. Um, the October, Robin and Fritz to hold a subcommittee meeting. Oh, we did that, yay, complete. Mm -hmm. uh, and from July, oh, gosh. Uh, no. Council Nicholson, Daniel, and Robin meet to coordinate the housing speaker series. I think maybe this could be incorporated into the brainstorming of the work plan, maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think we could take that off, because obviously it's been lingering for months and it hasn't been accomplished. Let's remove it and incorporate it into the strategic planning session. And I feel like the focus the fall has been on the, um, like the tenant workshops. And yes, it workshops, has. Right? So it's like Agreed. it's not been ignored, but it's been, yeah. that's been the priority. So. Yeah. Thank you, Daniel. Then what we do for Heritage is just have like a couple of future actions. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good idea. On it, but just a yeah. little reminder down there. Yeah. Okay, that's a good one to have. So, can you keep it on there for that? Or? I think so. And I don't, I, I, I'm not too big a deal with the dates, although it is, it's nice and organized. <laughs> but um, I'm okay if it's sort of like, yeah, let's just keep it on our radar. Kind of a parking lot, if you will, or whatever you want to call it. Um, but future action just sounds really nice. Okay. Uh, and then I think we'll put number two under future actions, unless there's been any movement. Uh, on this roommate plan, I think we'll, and again, maybe we bring that up in the um, strategic plan, our brainstorming, and see if that, where that fits on our priorities. Okay. Done. Action items done. Uh, delegation has been moved, so we'll go to council referrals. So Daniel Martin is going to present on some of the rezoning. Cool. Can I steal that? Yeah, I will. Shall we have to do first? Sure, yeah. So the PowerPoint? Yeah. Okay. So I'll say, so this one is a council referral, um, but I think it's probably premature. Like, we're not necessarily looking for a firm recommendation from the committee at this point. It's sort of initial, initial thoughts that you want to share. So maybe just informal comments. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, into it. So this is a rezoning application at 10 Mickey Miller Road. So this is along the strip of Miller, um, immediately past the Garrison Key, almost opposite where the proposed fire hall is going. Um, and so it's 1050 Miller is, is the fourth one down from the Snug Cove House um, subdivision. So if you go by, it's kind of a little greenhouse. Um, yeah. Is it the one that's had a lot of trees cut down recently yeah. and everything? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. It, it's currently zoned SR2, so that's our standard like residential zone, so without a single dwelling on it. Um, but this strip of Miller has been identified in the OCP as village residential in terms of future development. So there's a strip of them that are um, have that designation. Um, and so that in our OCP then leads to a couple policies that go specifically into, let's see if I have it, all right. So policy 160 says we'll consider applications for townhouses in the village residential area, and then it gives three points that we want to consider. So it's scale and character, um, it's servicing and it's impact, so traffic screening use. Um, and then policy 163 sets natural density for that village residential area. So it says 12.5 units per, essentially per one acre um, appropriate. And then it says proposals of up to 17.5 units per acre considered if, and one is if density is transferred or if it involves something other than traditional market-based housing. And it gives, it gives out a number of examples. Um, so the, the rezoning application that we received was for eight, a total of eight units on the site. So it's a, a duplex off of Seniors Lane and a sixplex access off of Miller Road. Um, so that was the rezoning application. So one of the first things we did is look at, let's see if I have it in here. 
This, this one's a little hard to follow, and it's a little hard to go. But essentially, it's like, okay, what is the, what would be the allowable units on this site under those two different OCP um, designations? So the 12.5 for market unit would say you can have about three units on the site, and at the OCP for the non-traditional, so this is rental housing, it's okay, it fits under that non-market-based, non one of the examples of rental housing, so okay, that would fit. That said, it would allow about four units. So the proposal is for eight, so it's, it exceeds that, that OCP level. Can I just ask yeah. you, um, is this for rental units or a purchase or a mixture? So the application is for rental. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then just for comparison, we looked at then um, Village by the Coast, that's Dunco House Society, and their total lots, so including the supportive housing and the market housing, and what the equivalent would be at that levels. And this is where this part cuts off, but is looking at what the total what the total build out of those ten properties. So we wanted to say what's the impact of these ten, and say we're not just considering one on a one off, because essentially if council says yes, you can have eight on this one, then it's sort of it's, it's sort, sort of precedent then for everyone else to say okay, we would like to have an equivalent number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it doesn't you know it doesn't necessarily imply a precedent to people, but kind of everyone would have that 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 would be the target in mind, and um, so we'd want to look at it. So what? Staff recommended to council is instead of proceeding with a single rezoning, is to do a comprehensive re review of all those ten properties that are in that set, same designation. So some of it is sort of the technical side of looking at, well, what's the sewer capacity of the line mm -hmm. and of the sewer plant? What's the water capacity of the line down at and of our building? And looking at cost recoveries of that and saying, okay, if it needs to be, if we're going to need to service the number of units, we're going to need to increase it, and there's going to need to be a, some sort of financial contribution for that. And same with looking at traffic and what's what are the traffic impacts. Um, but a piece of it looking at, and we part talking to the neighbors and talking to different committees and saying, okay, well, what is, what is the sense of this area? Because it could be to say, well, we think the OCP said that there should be 17.5 units per acre, and that's where we want to hold to, and we don't think it should be more, versus saying, well, maybe we want to reconsider that into be large. Um, and so then they, the recommendation went to a number, recommended it go to a number of committees, so here, but the housing committee is one of them. But so I bring it to you for initial conversation, but thinking that for, for any of the committees to have like a fully informed recommendation to council, I feel like we would need to do the back, that background work first to say what, what are the implications of some of the, the pieces. Um, yeah, so I'd like to come back at some point as well, but sort of give this initial thought, initial review, initial comments to, mm -hmm. at this point. Does anybody have initial um, thoughts? My initial thoughts are great rental units. Building rental units just makes so much sense. On the other hand, I do recognize certainly looking into sewer capacity and water capacity is incredibly important and basic. Um, it would be interesting to see what the design is. And to compare it, what, how, um, how does that compare in terms of density? To, is it the Abbey Field or it used to be the yeah, Abbey Field so building close. site? Yeah. That's so, what those yeah. comparisons were to the, it was about 12, if yeah. you compared it straight yeah. up. And it, it does differ, like I had looked at comparison to, well, what's the difference with the, like, the market units yeah, in Stuttgart House there. versus, if and I, exclude the supportive. yeah, and I had done that, I didn't include it because I just got too many, but. But yeah, so it's in that realm, but we <laughs> so we get it would look similar to what we're, we're seeing in the Abbey Field? Like, well, so just, just the market side, and so just looking at net, so when I just looked at the properties themselves and not clocks up lane, right, and just because thinking, okay, maybe that's comparable, because already the road's already in, it's just the properties. Yeah. It, it's roughly comparable. Like, the rezoning proposal mm -hmm. is eight. Um, Stud Cove House market lots would be 8.3. Mm -hmm. So it's... Okay, it's very similar. So that's very yeah. similar, yeah. yeah. Personally, I'd be absolutely mm -hmm. all for it, especially given the fact that it's rental units. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the, uh, uh, the, the, the more holistic approach, I think what Daniel said in his opening comments is really important. But whatever we decide here for this, is certainly going to change. Let's recognize that if we fast forward this five or 10 years, mm -hmm. that particular stroke is going to change. Could so you go back to the map with the OCP map and the, do you know what I mean? The two comparison. Yeah, maybe that one, just so we have an idea. Yeah. So that's what the OCP, the future, yes. has so, so and that's the point, I think the point is I'm very glad that we're looking at all these together because if you agree, uh, just to do this one in isolation is, is going to, 
you, you can see that this is, this is going to set a change. I also agree that it's going to set a certain benchmark. And that may be not be a bad thing. So whatever we do for this, kind of will be taken forward and set up as a goalpost example, whether directly or indirectly, but it will influence uh, other arguments for or against similar development. So I, I mean, I, I couldn't think of a better location for this type of, I, um, and it seems to be in line with all the things we've discussed, certainly since I've been a councillor in terms of density, the space, and, and I think, but I think the standard eventually that we, when we get down to those details, it will be, it will be one of the goalposts taken forward. So it's kind of a little bit more important than just yeah. this piece of land. Mm -hmm. And I take uh, Daniel's point very seriously there. And I'm really glad that we're looking at the whole structure mm -hmm. because this is going to have an impact on this piece and, 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 and good because this is the place to do it. And, and I wish it well. And I, I think we follow this with interest. Let's hope we can, we can move this uh, along and with all the considerations. The extra time taken should be the extra time taken on how it affects future development around the area. So it's going to need a little, without bogging it down, mm -hmm. it's actually going to be saddled with a few other issues yeah. which don't directly pertain to yeah. just this. And hopefully the owner yeah. accepts that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think so. He's the trailblazer here. So good, I'm glad we had for information. I don't know if it needs a whole lot of discussion because it's yeah. going to go forward, but uh, I'm glad well, it's I just, been introduced. Do you want to give Maureen or Fritz? Do you, do you have Maureen? Which lot is uh, the one with the uh, gym on it? Oh, it's um. It's this one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right here every Monday. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's the second one in from the insurance office. That's Mary Letson. Mary Letson. Yeah. Well, it's it's interesting that that he's proposing the two <clears throat> the two buildings. Yeah. Um, he's got two buildings. I'm wondering if that might be a potential pattern mm -hmm. down there with the. Uh, village at the Cove. Is this where the road is? For Fox Lane? For Fox Lane? Fox no, Lake it Cove. goes through here. It goes, it goes, yeah. it it goes, goes right through here. in the middle and bends down yeah. to the middle. And then no, and it stays, it, it's, it cuts just the corner of that little part of it. Right. Um, so Maureen, if you look at the land use bylaw map, do you see where the dot it is for area <coughs> three? And then there's sort of an area one path. That's where the road comes up, is through the solid part. So it cuts part of that and the yeah. little part that's left. And there's an right. easement here yeah. for them to get access to that. Yeah. What I'm wondering, I'm not just saying that mm -hmm. space, what I'm wondering is whether there's a potential for, for a central yeah, lake here okay. as well. Right. Or is it too tight? I don't think that it would serve a purpose. Because considering you've got, just in my, like you've got Miller on one side and Senior on the other, I think introducing another lane which would be 20, 24 feet wide would eat so much into the property. Okay. Whereas I'm not sure there'd be an advantage. Whereas it makes sense with Village of the Cove because they don't have seniors laying going behind it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We're just thinking about the traffic. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. The yeah. road is very much in. I actually drew a bit a couple of days ago up, up on that. It's seniors Road? Uh, uh, yeah. No, just no. Oh, Fox Club. Fox Club. Yeah. And think about caught me by surprise. I forgot how steep yeah. it's actually quite steep coming down there, I, I, and, and I just wanted to get a feel for it, yeah. um, so how that line banks up there. Okay, anyway, yeah. good, um, thanks. Fritz, did you have any comments? Oh, I do, because like, you know, as a start, I find this exercise actually not, not the way to do it. Okay. Um, because I think we're just kind of picking and choosing out of the OCP bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. Um, the OCP doesn't facilitate any of this. It is really the bottom line. Um, so the, um, what I believe, I really strongly believe, is that you have to take a step back and simply focus on the type of development that is appropriate for that area. In density, in form and character. Forget the word density for a moment. It's kind of a bullshit number too. What does it really mean? Like, you know, so like how do you measure that? So I think this is just completely wrong. I think for my, I really believe that what we should do is just imagine what should be there mm -hmm. today. And forget about everything else. If you start to look at the OCP, it is so outdated. It is so completely wrong. It actually says, and I'll give you one sentence that proves that. Um, 
da Daniel Skin, he actually said, it took one second, and that is one that you, you already have to ignore, otherwise you even can't do this. It's a density is transferred to a site in Snuck Cove from elsewhere on the island. Mm -hmm. Now, you can ignore that one and only be part of it, you know, mm -hmm. but it is so out of date. The, um, the OCP review, which I have kind of here, which is really hard to make people focus on it. Um, I came to, what I kind of conclude is that a lot of recommendations for Snuck Cove Village are actually good. The method, how it is done, is wrong. It's simply outdated. <coughs> the idea is that nothing can happen outside Snow Cove Village, and the density has to be transferred to Snow Cove Village to make anything happen. Now, as a council, you can ignore the OCP as long as you want. One day, somebody stands, stands up there that is, that is against multi plans, and you can make a I'm very sorry, strict. Against what? Multi? It doesn't really matter what. At a certain point, Somebody from the public will stand up and say, from what council is doing, contravenes OCP. Mm -hmm. You have to change the OCP. Then you find yourself in a huge issue because what we're doing, lots of it does not meet the OCP period, right? Mm -hmm. So if you actually do that, I mean, what you should probably do after this meeting, I have to apologize for one thing, but when I did this um, summary, my page program failed to make page uh, uh, failed to identify the yellow, you know the yellow highlight, because it did it for a while and then it was just the blue and couldn't change it anymore. And I thought it would show the blue, it didn't. But so um, I have to revise that a bit. But the, um, I think the, as a community we have to step back and not, if you, if you compare all these numbers, to me it's meaningless and I'm not content. Because like, what, it, like I don't really care about what, what the density is on on, uh, uh, on the other side. The only thing I care about, or you should care about, is what is going to be on all those other lots and in other areas of Snowcoat Village in the future. Mm -hmm. And what is it impacted by? Is it impacted by, you know where that number actually comes from? That 17.5, I remember those meetings. That was for people who wouldn't even see, half, didn't want to see half the density. And what the problem that we also have in the OCP, that it almost tries to be a land use bar. This should not be an OCP, these numbers. The OCP should have general objectives that say, we want to accommodate housing for the community. We want to accommodate all these different things. But the bottom line is that this OCP is actually in your way. Mm -hmm. What is that 17.5? So are you saying it's time to redo this aspect of the OCP? I think we should have the courage to actually imagine what should be there, which is the best for Bowen today. Yes. You know, and I if you have an OCP agree. that is greatly updated, mm -hmm. then don't use it. Mm -hmm. and, and only, and also don't use it in bits and pieces mm -hmm. that happen to be convenient for you. That's all these numbers here to me. But what I wrote in this here, it says, all these numbers here, from 162 down, they call them objectives. They're not objectives. They're trying to, they were so paranoid that they were trying to prevent things that may happen in the future. Mm -hmm. That's really what it is. Yeah. And, and, that's just, and if you read the, you should read the OCP and keep in mind what really the way of thinking was at that time. It starts with referring the old OCP from 1996. Then they said for me, then they come to, I say it once again, I said it before, okay? But this is the basis. If you fall through the whole OCP, you think well, this thing should be thrown out of the window, you know? But it, but, but it bothers me in a meeting like this. If so everybody starts to look at the OCP and the densities that are there, you shouldn't care. You should only care about what is right for the future and then deal with it. Well, I think in part, so we'll get in a little bit more to an OCP review. No, but what I'm saying is that I find it really hard to meeting. comment on this. Right. Because, like, if you compare all these stats, what do they mean? Yeah. Like, like I can't, on, I honestly cannot comment on that. And I'm an architect. Yeah, but may, may, I, may I respond? I don't think that you're, you're going to get objection from this group that the OCP has, um, has problems and can be an impediment. And we've been working through, you know, identifying. Uh, points that, that ought to be changed. But I think in some respects what Council had in mind and what Daniel was undertaking 
is more or less what you think should be done there, which is that we have pulled back and are interested in thinking about the area as, as a whole. So we're not quite in the box that that's being No, but I start to be, like, I mean, maybe this is with all the best intentions to make you aware. Okay, for instance, if you have all these spreadsheets and all these different densities and everybody has to really understand how it pans out in reality, right? Or you take the approach so to take first a step away from that, you know, and, and identify what is important to happen in the village or particularly on the block. Yeah, but there are two things going on, and, and, and one is that visioning exercise, and the other is a practical issue, which is that we have a rezoning application on the table from a particular individual who wants to work in that area. That's the only rezoning application that we've got related to those those ten lots that, that I'm aware of. So it, it has served as a trigger to think about um, the the area as a as a whole. And like it or not, Daniel has to work with what's on the table at, at the moment. And if if what's on the table as far as uh, OCP and land use bylaw does not make sense in terms of what would be ideal for that area, then we look at an OCP and a land use um, bylaw uh, amendment, which, I mean, the, the OCP, I mean, you can look at it in terms of, you know, sort of cherry picking what you like and what you don't like, but the fact of the matter is that's how things have been progressing towards something different. Um, Alison has her hand up. Yeah, I remember a conversation oh, several meetings ago where this was kind of discussed and it was a matter of do we go, do we cherry pick as it were, or do we say that what we're, our method is to work with each one individually for a while, see what that results in, and it become a model potentially for the community to say this is what this could look like, and if they like that, fine. We had that, that conversation months ago. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because the artist is like, <clears throat> if you realize that if the OCP is not helping, right? But for instance, also, it's, it still says specifically in the OCP absolutely no buildings more than three stories. It's just in there, right? And there's more of that. But I'm saying is that if you then start to use the numbers from the OCP, then to me, they're not meaningful because that 17.5 is part of only three stories. It, 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 it's part of a density transfer. It is part of everything happens in the code, now we're doing all the layers, and nothing else on the island. So I feel that it's not the right reference that if you, in my mind, if you would first make up your mind what you want to achieve, and then analyze what's in the way of, of the of the, language, of the official community plan. Mm -hmm. I would work the other way around. So I'm trying to say, first make up your mind what you want to do, and then Daniel can let, can, let, can let you know where it doesn't <coughs> comply with the OCP because part of it will not comply with the OCP anyway. So you're saying, <laughs> so you're saying we need to review the OCP as it refers to housing, but on the other no, hand, no, we I'm have saying, this. I said, give, give a very, very clear example. Mm -hmm. I say if you take this particular uh, piece of land along Millers, not just that one lot, but that what's this, the mm. yellow that you see there now. Mm -hmm. And if you really say what should happen there, what's in the interest of all, and you mm -hmm. forget a bit about everything that restricts the hell out of you, and then what you do is, then you say, from this seems to be right, maybe it's four stories, you know, and maybe it has a higher density, maybe it has all kinds of small units, and all these unit counts don't mean anything. Uh, and then, then you say to uh, Daniel, please take, give me a summary of where it doesn't meet the OCP. And then that's what you want to change. Mm -hmm. And it's actually fairly easy because most people will agree with all these changes. But if you if you go the other way around and then you are already restricted before you actually do anything. I just think it's just a, a, a Well, a, a I, so, so if I can jump in, I agree kind of with what you said. Okay, there's a few things there. First of all, we are we're in a box, like we have to deal with the OCP whether we like it or not. Like right. it's it's something we have to address with all these applications. And I agree with both of you about, you know, taking a holistic view of, of this whole area, which I think they are doing. Um, and, and what came to my mind as you were all discussing was that the OCP is a living document. And, and I think, I don't agree, I, I personally agree with you that it really does need an overhaul. I don't think we're 
that's on the books yet. Um, but how I see it as the living document is these OCP amendments, right? Because this would include yes. an OCP amendment as well as a rezoning, and I see that as how it evolves yes. in between the major overhauls. But Robin, that right? is the same. Yeah. I'm not saying you have to start a complete OCP overhaul. I'm yeah. not saying that. I'm yeah. just saying is make up your mind what you want. Yeah. And, and a lot of people will agree with that. Yeah. Then identify what's wrong, what, where it doesn't meet the OCP, yeah. and make that part of your request to change, to change yeah. the OCP. Agreed. That is different yeah. than taking the OCP with the restrictions in it mm. and, and, and make that have impact on what you try to achieve. And, okay. and it doesn't take more time. It actually, in my mind, it's actually easier. Save time. Yeah, I, I, save you. Time. I see what you're saying. Um, I just feel, I, I've just, uh, you can speak up to it again. I feel like it's probably just best practice as a planner in a municipality that you bring those numbers in. But you're saying we should not look at them and we should actually be just looking at that area. So, I mean, um, yeah. What would be best there and what we want to see there. And just if I can finish my thought. Um, I feel like that's what we're doing when we look at the Snack Club House, the Village by the Cove development, because that was really a big exercise from what I understand for a few years, right? And so that that's what we're looking at really as kind of setting the precedent potentially for this for this strip here. Um, Danny, did you want to jump yeah, in? Yeah, I think I was just gonna say that I mean that in doing these referrals, that's the feedback council is looking for is to say. So this is the presentation I gave to council, which in part is trying to frame it in terms of this is what is allowed on the site now. So council knows, like, okay, what what, what are we considering and what's different than what's currently proposed? Mm -hmm. But what council, I think, is looking for from the committees is to say, this is our vision for that strip. So the housing committee said, you know, the OCP doesn't relate anymore, and what we want to see is X. We want to see yeah. this happen on okay. the strips. That's what council is looking for. Yeah. Council, so council is looking for, yeah, this committee and all the committees to yeah. say, this is forget and I think the we're, past. we're probably there so like from the feedback it seems I think based on the comparison of village by the code what's being proposed that looks like it does fit um, I think that's what we're saying is that we're saying that's where we're heading that's the numbers closer to these eight units that's proposed and that's similar to Snuggle House as opposed to the three or four or whatever was the limitation in the OCP so I think we are kind of giving that that visionary this is where we are this is where we're at this is where we think the code is going so we could say something like We'd be interested in seeing higher density, four-story townhouses in assembled lots along Miller Road. Oh, well you said. could, yeah. 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 Could yes. That's yes. actually, yes. yeah, thank you. And yes. then you where does it now. not apply to your point? And then, that and then yeah, I mean, that becomes an Specifically, OCP Specifically, the OCP needs to... Yes. And and I, I think even, yeah, the committee doesn't need to get into that, maybe what needs to change. The committee's goal is to say, this is the vision. Yes. And then yeah. like go yeah. planner. To yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And I, mean, I go back to our overarching goal, which is kind of to support the creation of diverse housing units that meet low to moderate income households, right? And I feel like this proposal of eight units on a single piece of land, that's, and I think when I examined the sizes, they were a variety of unit sizes, I don't know how many, but a duplex with quite a larger unit and then a sixplex with smaller units. Um, and the fact that they're rental and um, within walking distance of the cove and transport and everything, it's kind of a no-brainer slam dunk to me that this is where we want it, this is where it should be. Um, it sounds about the right number, but you know, let's see how that shakes out. And the only other comment I had is maybe consideration of parking, whether it's, I know they've shown parking along Senior Lane and maybe that's the right decision, but I also know Senior Lane can be quite busy. And so whether that's, and I, it's used as a pedestrian lane from uh, Senior, uh, Bowen Court down to the, um, to the village. So. Is that the right place? I think it's just consideration as to whether, think through whether that's the right place for parking. Is it split? Is it off Miller? I don't know the answer, but uh, yeah, that's almost one needs of my, to be my bigger questions. Yeah, because generally, like our policy is always you access off of the smaller road and not on right. Miller. Yeah. So generally, our policy would be we like public works would not want to see and ten, then, 10 driveways onto Miller. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we were, you know, like the preference would be to push on the senior thing, but then how much is that? Possible. And the senior lane is like, very small with yeah. probably very limited capacity to expand. So, anyway, it's just, yeah. it needs yeah. to be considered that, that a lot of, I don't know the answer. A, a, a challenge is part of this development, yeah. Yeah. how, how yeah. to work that in the best possible yeah. way. Um, I, I see that challenge and I think everybody yeah. does. Well, but yeah, I you know, just a comparison, yes. right? If yeah. you look at seniors' lane as a lane, yeah. and if you look at what lanes do mm. in the city, mm. and how many parkades and people discharge and enter buildings over the lane, yeah. it's probably 10 times. Mm. 
Right. So the idea that, that it doesn't have capacity is not believable. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Just look at a laneway in, 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 in Vancouver. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. And I'm not saying right or wrong. I'm just saying yeah. it's, it's worthy of consideration and thought as to is that the right place. And maybe the answer is yes, it is the right place. But yeah, I want to take a step back a little bit. The, as you know, I happen to be on the uh, mayor standing committee of right. the community last. And if they look at a parcel like that, they said they like to see an expression of interest from developers. Now you have to give them something. What you should give them, you can do it different ways. You could just write it as objectives and then ask people to come back. Mm -hmm. The objectives may be not in numbers, but it may be in true object ob objectives. For instance, the maximum amount of rental housing. Like how did it work from a financial point of view? They'll go through the calculations, right? And then um, form a character. You can put in there. You can say four stories are allowed. Right? And you can say that the community is willing to relax the parking, you know, you can go on like that. Now you have something, and if that comes from council, right, this council endorses it's a request for, for uh, expressions of interest, mm -hmm. then you have to have something that people have some trust in, you know, they don't have to go through a proper process and be nuked, you know what I mean, because yeah. it's not good. And so people have to be able to trust and are willing to spend the time on it. In our office, we spend time on all kinds of things, and I even don't know if we get paid for it, mm -hmm. right? And what I'm saying is that the, um, if that, and it, I think the, the committee, the, the mayor standing committee, is trying to find a way to, to give enough certainty that something like that may happen. Yeah. Now, if you have that proposal for only one lot, you know, Maybe one thing you would ask um, Daniel to do is simply to to write down why, to which extent, that the specific application doesn't meet the OCP and the LUB and, uh, and the snuck of uh, you know master plan and whatever else uh, policies there are, right? So that the that is one, but then that shouldn't stop you from doing the other thing, which is exactly that's an envision, envisioning process mm. and trying to decide. I mean, like if you know, for instance, the, the, the mayor's committee also says, from, you know, that parcel three, right, the, the, the corner, the corner of uh, Millers and, and, and the front road where the gas station was in the past. Mm -hmm. They say, well, that is such a prime parcel, you know, and there's a way, there's, in a way there's pressure to do something right away, put some rental on it. On the other hand, that is one of the key parcels, right? So what actually, what the committee, the, the mayor's committee wants, is that that strip along Miller's Landing is developed first, you know, at a, at a good density with a good variety, the best mm -hmm. use, right? Yeah. Um, and then it allows the other parcel to sit there for a while because the thinking is that um, that is also the highest uh, value and it is the, the best use. But so the um, so you maybe just talk to the mayor or so, then, mm -hmm. and then see where, what our goal should be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see what I mean? So I want to wrap this up because we've got several things to move on, but I think these are all really good thoughts. I have two final closing thoughts on it, um, what, and that are similar to what we might discuss in a bit on, of our review um, of the land use file and everything. But this might present an opportunity um, for. Uh, something that Fritz and I mentioned, which is outright and then conditional zoning. So it might be an opportunity. So similar to what the OCP says of if you do market, it's this much. If you do something we really want as a community to get this much, that might be an interesting opportunity to present it. So you could get this density or this FSR or whatever the number or the metric is for market. But then if you do one of these things that we've identified as a community need, rental housing below market, co-op, whatever, you could get this bonus of density or something like that. Yep. So it might be an interesting opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I don't think this is on the radar, but if it was a consideration, I know you're looking at one parcel, but I don't know if it could be like a, if you actually make the decision to rezone the whole area, I don't know if that's in the purview or even on the radar, but it would be an interesting thing to look at. This, I don't know if it's the first time I'm going, but first time kind of in my recent memory, that you would have a strip of land that has now been quite significantly upzoned, and then what does the community, in terms of the municipality, get from that? Because I don't know if we have community amenity contributions or if we have any of those kinds of development charges. Do you know what I mean? Because if somebody was to own a piece of that land and it got significantly upzoned, how does the community benefit from that? So, anyways, just questions yeah. and putting it out there. Well, so we benefit from having rental units. 
Yes. Fair enough. And that's a huge benefit. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Yeah. And by somebody's property value quadruples because of everything. Yes. That's going to be significant. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And should the yes, community like share in that? Yeah. And what is the mechanism for that? But the, um, so I think I mentioned last time that we have our offices working on a little area in Gibsons, and it's actually pre-zoned, but it's it's only pre-zoned comprehensive development, mm -hmm. and then it goes back to the OCP. So it doesn't limit you again. It's, it, it, it doesn't need two tiers because it's just zoned from, okay, come back with a proposal to us, right? But then what, what I think is, is important is that there's clarity what kind of proposals you want, yeah. right? So, but, but then you don't have to, um, you don't have to rezone it, pre-zone it that specifically. And that's what I kind of like about it. Yeah. But then, um, Sorry, just lost my thought. Okay, well, let's move on. If you do think of anything, write it down and throw put it in. Hopefully, Daniel, that's given you lots mm -hmm. of food yeah. for thought. Okay, um, and is it, it's not quite 10 30. It's the first one. We have another um, resounding application. I know, yeah, yeah. and so um, hopefully it's faster because it's only been allowed 10 minutes. So let's try to get through that before our five. Sure. Our I'm going to give it 10 minutes. Oh, because we already talked about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. hopefully it's great. Um, I got it. I got it. Oh, no, I got the same one. Oh. So you want to right, right click it. Yeah, this is the same one. Oh, shizzle. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll find it. <laughs> uh, give me two secs. Where am I getting this from? Cardina? Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. He's okay. okay. That's on. So this is one that you've seen before, and this is basically just coming back. So this is the Bowen Island Marina. So this was the um, the the, um, the house with the second secondary suite, the two suites in it. Um, and so what I presented to council was um, the recommendation, so an overview of the proposal, and as related to the Housing Advisory Committee, the additional secondary suite in the single family home on that property. Um, and so I brought to council um, your recommendation. I brought the community economic development recommendation which just talked about the commercial piece of it oh. um, and the advisory planning commission that looked at both and they also agreed they also supported the allowance of the second secondary suite um, and I brought a draft bylaw so bylaw 497 to council so it did four different things so most of them related to the commercial side um, but what it did in the settlement residential side is to allow two um, accessory residential uses what we call a secondary suite or a detached secondary suite falls under this Thing. So the bylaw would make that change. Um, this is more village commercial and more, and this is then moving there, that portion of that the um, residential piece of the property into this special SR2 exception zone that would allow the second secondary suite within the house. Um, and then we recommended, so we recommended first reading and recommended second reading be conditional on them holding a public information meeting um, and doing code compliance report in particular for the retail building with the sort of infill building. Oh, between. so it's being all considered, the, re the re yeah. residential and yeah. retail? Yeah. Okay. So, so council then gave first reading to the bylaw 497, which made those changes, and they referred the bylaw back to the same committees and to the Islands Trust for comment and made conditions before going to second reading. So I'm coming back to the Housing Advisory Committee in part to show you, okay, this is what happened. This is how it related into the bylaw. Um, looking at the Housing Advisory Committee's additional comments or if it's just like confirming your support for the the rezoning application, it can be yeah. that simple if it sort of ticks the box that you thought you wanted this to happen and it's happening. And yeah, I'm not right. sure we really need to put any discussion to it. It's we discussed it last time, and we all thought it was good because it's the right place for, yeah. for density and for extra rental units, and it's moving forward. So, and I think it's a much needed upgrade from the facilities that need, yes, especially. Okay. And I know we're not discussing it, but the commercial side, yeah, well, like it's, a good, less, yeah. it's a good you know, bringing everything up to scratch and approving it. Um, just a question, yeah. The, the new zoning is SR2F. Two two yeah. And that's a brand new section that's being added. Yeah, so we have the SR2 is a number of zone variations, it's called, which is how our bylaw does it when it's like generally it follows this zone, but there's something a little different. Right. Um, so it'd be creating this SR2F zone variation. That's the number we're up to. So I'm just thinking in terms of precedent. If there were other homes out there that had two rental yeah. suites and, and this could be a potential 
zone that they could be captured. Yeah. Yeah. If they're if they're SR two, and yeah, then they have to go in there. Okay. Thank you. There's a question for uh, Daniel. Um, with this specific area, right? I've always thought it would be nice if there's a public pathway that runs into a snug uh, point, right? Right. Through the residential lot. Is something like that feasible in the process? Let's say the council would want it, right? Yeah, because you give you know relaxations and you give yeah, it's it's possible. Like if we look at I have a good picture here. I guess it's just this one, right? Because there's a path that comes up past the marina if you go there that goes up to the house. Mm -hmm. um, so it's possible if council flagged that as a priority and say we want a public access through. Um, it's something we have to raise. So you're like the walkability would definitely be better. Like if, if, if it's the intent that the Snuckle Village has more pedestrian yeah. routes and all that, yeah. then maybe that's an opportunity. Where would it take you to? Sorry. It would take you to Bunta Cardina. So yeah. right off the border. Yeah, it would be somewhere through the lot up to this yeah. road, right? Yeah. Oh, I see. So it would avoid going down around yeah. around yeah. the road. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't yeah. necessarily yeah. adversely or really damage other people's existing lots or houses or. I mean, I would have to look at that route in terms yeah. of where you'd end up. Yeah. Well, I mean, if it's yeah. do it was. Right. It, it might be something to think about. This is a dead end, right? Yes, so it is a dead end right yeah. now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want us to put that in as a recommendation? Just, sure. just, it should be given some time. To consider. Yeah. To consider. Robin. Yes. I've just, I'm mulling over Fritz's ideas. And maybe what Daniel's saying as well. Do we have on the plan that we potentially could, as a committee, do a visioning project of what we would like to see in terms of the village areas on the island? You know, so the workshop the, as a housing advisory committee, I don't think we do. It would where would that where would that land if like because it wouldn't be the mayor's committee because it's not community land. It would probably be the APC in terms of okay. like zoning. Yeah. yeah. Because that makes all the sense to me. It's crazy to be coming at this with all these piecemeal ideas. Yeah. I agree. I think to do a vision and say this is what we would like to see makes way more sense. Yeah. And they'll be discussing that same yeah. referral that we had. So maybe what you could do, Allison, is we could find out. Maybe could you yeah, we, we can find out meetings. when the meeting is, and you're we would be welcome to come as a member of the public, right. and then we could certainly ask them if you can, you know, give comment or something during that process as a, you know. That you're also on the so it is happening. So yeah. there is a group that's doing well, that. Well, they'll be discussing the same application. The same application that as we do. Got. But, but I'm not talking about a specific application. Right. I'm talking yeah. about a visioning where we say, let's look at what we actually want for the village area. I'm going to point over on this side of the table because I think that that's something that would have to land with council. And I'm just guessing they would have to decide that it was a priority in their strategic plan, and then either assign staff or committees or somebody to take that on. Yeah. I think you need a very specific directive from council to mm -hmm. say we this is important. We need to look at it. I think and it I, is. at the moment it does that doesn't exist. But um, so then I, I think, think that you would have to have it's conversations with the local councillors. As too. an architect, he yeah. says this is crazy. We're coming at this the wrong there. I completely agree from my completely non-educated perspective. It makes sense to do a real visioning. Well, there you go. Maybe we need to put that to our elected members. Um, what do you think, Maureen? Well, I think there's discussion going on. In Because it's so significant. Yeah. Having that discussion. I would very much like to see that happen. Yeah. Not the time necessarily. Yeah. Okay. Well, happen. let's get back to this one. Is there any further discussion on this one? I think this is pretty straightforward, and I think that's an interesting idea to consider. Yeah, that's a great one. Okay. So I have that the Housing Advisory Committee recommend that Council consider requesting that a path be offered as a rezoning yeah. amenity for a public path. Pardon? A public path. I think that's premature. I think somebody needs to go and look. Yeah. I think yeah. we recommend that staff yeah. uh, investigate yeah. Yeah. or investigate the possibility of a public yeah. pathway, a public path yeah. connecting the dock to yeah. the parking. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's not that right. staff that's investigate, that work. To yeah. investigate <laughs> the possibility yeah. of a public path between the public arena team. and Cardina Road yeah. Yeah. as part of this rezoning application. Is that 
Yeah. Or drive, sorry, drive. Drive. Continue drive. Yeah. Um, I'd like a verb. I'd like the possibility of constructing <laughs> a public road. Oh, of or creating. Of providing. Of creating. Providing. Providing is kind of the. Yeah. You're asking. Okay. Whatever you can. Uh, I remember what I forgot. Yeah, okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just to let you know that Urbanix is emailing in there already. Okay, so yeah, we can get them on. Just someone will be coming in. But, but it's very general and it relates to what you said about do to your zoning. Yeah. Uh, I don't necessarily think for a large parcel like that on, on Miller, but, but in general, um, because I believe that the DC government now allows rental only zoning. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? So then you can have a second tier that whatever uh -huh. doubles your density if you go all rental. Yes, I think, and that goes along with my thinking. I think, yeah, okay. it takes it another step. Right. Yeah. So yeah, maybe it's you know, there's maybe there's a few different you know, outright and then conditional and then, you know, yeah. whatever they are. Right. I think that would be interesting. I gotta say, you have to have the right zoning and the right tool for the right mm -hmm. property. Yeah. But if you look at that uh, property, the actual proposal, only that lot, like the, the, the yeah, thing, yeah. right? Then you can say, if you would want to see it in isolation, maybe you would do that. But if you look at it as part of a larger area, yeah. then I don't think it should be CD, comprehensive development. Right. Because that, that actually would limit it too much. You see right. what I mean? Yeah. But it's really easy to justify the proposal then, because it's not allowed. Yeah. You just double the numbers. Okay, let's get, uh, thank you. Let's get the, the people price. on the line. Oh. oh, sorry. No, let's finish the. To vote. Let's finish the. Uh, this thing. Recommend that council direct staff to investigate the possibility of providing a public path between the marina and Cardina Drive as an amenity for the 375 Cardina Road rezoning application. Can you say something like the Housing Advisory Committee like reaffirms its support for the yeah for that's what I was wondering and something and and, and the Housing Advisory no, no, reconfirms yeah yeah our support yeah, yeah, yeah. for the um, rezoning application. Yes, we're just assuming you do, but I think it would yeah, be a good idea to put it in. We serve support the zoning and recommends that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Okay. I'll move that one. Yeah, second. second, Michael. All in favor? Yep. Friends, are Friends? you in favor? Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just check it out. You forgot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So unanimous. All right. So we're going to move on to number five, which is a delegation from her next. So do we need to get them on the line? She's supposed to be calling me. Okay. Um, I can call. Yeah, I'm just going to wash okay. it. Yeah. Yeah. I can wait. Oh my God. Yeah. Hi, Sophie. Hi. This is Steph. Oh, hi, nice to um, virtually meet you. How is everyone doing? Okay, and I'll hand you over to Robin, our chair, and she can introduce Well, people. hi. I'm Robin Fenton. I'm the chair of the Housing Advisory Committee. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, of course. Nice to meet you, Robin. Um, do we want to, uh, do you want to introduce yourself and then maybe we can very quickly go around the table? Yeah, that'd be great. So okay. my name is Sophie Payne, the consultant working on the law and housing report. Um, my colleague who's on another call that is also working on this is Rock Blackwell and Sebastian Din. So um, uh, we're with Urbanix Consultants and we're going to be taking on Timeline for this project is going to be until about late March, and November and this month has been primarily the data analysis um, section of the report, and pretty soon we'll start talking more to people in the community, and I would love to hear more about the backgrounds of everyone else in this community. Oh, great. Okay, well, why don't we start? Um, do you want me to go first? So, uh, my name is Robin Fenton. Um, I am a registered architect. Um, uh, that's my practicing trade, uh, and I'm also uh, leading the um, Birch, the nonprofit housing society on the island, and we're developing an affordable housing project on community lands. Um, yeah, and I chair this committee. That's a great Marie. summary. Um, I'm Maureen. Hi, Sophie. Um, I'm Maureen Nicholson. I'm one of the two councillors who serves on the uh, on, on this committee. Um, second term councillor. Uh, my day job. Um, College professor at uh, at Douglas College, and uh, I've been very keen on seeing our um, housing initiatives move forward over the past couple of years. Great, thank you. Sophie, hi, Michael Kale. I, I'm uh, the uh, the other councillor. Um, I'm also a member of the Islands Trust, 
and uh, have been on this committee for some time as well. And I, I think I'll just echo what Maureen said in terms of our desire to move ahead in the in the area in which you're you're going to be helping us. So uh, yeah. so we'll I'm sure we'll get to meet you in some time and look forward to that. Okay, great. I'm my name is Fritz de Vries. I'm a registered architect and the principal of Fritz de Vries Architects, which is a 12 person firm. Oh, sorry, I couldn't catch your name. You might be a little louder. Um, uh, Fritz, F R I T S, de Vries. Oh, okay. D E V R I E S. Does that help? It should be. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you a little bit better now. Okay. Okay, Great. thanks. Um, and I'm Daniel. Hi again. Hi, Daniel. <laughs> You know, I go way back. <laughs> I'm Alison Nixon. Um, I'm not an architect. <laughs> I'm a musician, and I sit on this committee because I'm really interested in seeing us developing more diverse and affordable housing. Great. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, and Sophie, yeah. step through, you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to, unless you have questions for us, um, just jump right into um, whatever it is you're going to share. Yeah, yeah. So. What I wanted to do was kind of get a sense of where all of you are at with what you're thinking the scope is going to be, especially the affordability piece. Um, I talked to Daniel about this, and I was I want to hear from people on the committee. What do you think makes an affordable? What do you think makes affordable housing, particularly within the context of Bowen Island? Can I speak Ooh. to that? Go ahead. Um, I think the recommendation used to be that people not pay more than a third of their income on right. housing. Um, so I think for this to be a really useful survey, we need to get both the costs, specific costs of rentals, um, mortgages in the case of purchase house, houses, and also roughly what income brackets people are living within. Okay. And get some very specific examples. So we've seen some surveys where they'll take an example household, a single mother with two children is living in an apartment. This is her income, this is what she's paying on housing. I think to have a wide variety of the different spectrums of our population uh, and that those kind of details is really important for this to be useful. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Yeah. One of the, this is Robin, one of the things I'm interested in is, um, and, and it's partly for our housing project that we're working on, is uh, to establish a baseline of the rent levels and then exactly what the affordable number would be. Is it 80% yes. below market? Is it some number below market? Um, because that's one of the things we struggle with. There's very little, uh, if any, actual data on rent levels on Bowen. Um, I've been collecting some, just sort of ad hoc, but um, that would be useful for future applications for housing and funding to actually know you know what those um, are, and then what is that metric that we want to measure under the market rates mm -hmm. um, yeah. to be affordable? But I want to echo Allison's sentiments as well. I'm sure the data is there. We have the census information, all the different income brackets, and the number of people. It would be interesting to see that extrapolated out to households mm -hmm. to say, well, based on the income levels in these various numbers, we should theoretically have uh, this many households at this many levels, whether that's you know extrapolated mortgage into costs or rental levels, I think that could be interesting data to have and then measure against what we actually have because I strongly suspect we don't have the mix that we need. We're very heavy on single family houses which are quite expensive and really light on all everything else, apartments, condos, townhouses, anything of that um, diverse nature. So something like that I think if, if it's possible would be quite oh, useful. Oh definitely, that's, that's the crux of what we do in our housing studies. We're very focused on the data and economics while informing that by our public consultation. So that's going to be a huge part of what we're going to provide for you. I would also be very interested, I kind of represent uh, the part of our population which is living on disability. Um, and so I'd be very interested to know how many apartments are potentially could be designated as um, accessible. So accessible, but I'm thinking uh, so almost supported housing. Oh. We don't actually have any at this point, so being able to say we have this many people on the island who yeah. could use supported housing, and we have two apartments, for example, um, that that could be designated as supported housing, would be very helpful to see as well. 
Thank you. Yeah, that's a good point. And I would also like to take this opportunity and, um, you know, it would be easier if you are to follow up with me on contacts that you think would be helpful for, most likely they would all be on the island, but I'm looking for information on how to understand the needs of different types of vulnerable populations. I have I contacts. Okay, great. Yeah, because then uh, I could just hit the ball, you know. Yeah, it's absolutely. A, I can put you in touch with folks. Wonderful. Because I, I can, and that way I can determine the current need um, and then also the future need based yes. on, the, on the current, all things being equal. That'd and be great. What's the best way for us to do that? Should we go via Daniel here at the Muni or should we email? Like, would it be better to filter through him or is it better to go straight to uh, Dr. Well, Hans? Daniel, do you, want, do, do you want to say anything to that? Um, I, I don't mind either way. Okay. Okay. Um, in that case, you could just send it straight to me. Okay. And maybe CC Daniel or something? Sure. Just so you um, yeah, sure. Loop if you want. I, mean, I just want to make sure we know. I don't want to make more work for you, but don't want you to be out of the loop as well. Will yeah. someone actually be coming to the island? Like some of the vulnerable population I'm thinking of, they need someone to actually sit with them over a cup of coffee and ask yeah. the questions. They won't be coming yeah. to town. Um, that's what I was, I was hoping, in addition to the contacts, that you all had some events, some places that I could physically come to with the surveys to talk to people. Is something like that available in January, um, February, or early March? Yeah, it's a tough time of year. We don't have a lot going on, but yeah. Um, yeah. nothing like large um, and that's happening anyways. But some of the things that have been used in past for surveys, um, it's really good to hit the ferries. So people actually go with copies of a survey or an iPad and you hit the, the peak hour runs on the ferries and you'll get the commuters that way. Mm -hmm. um, that's one way to do it. Um, that's a really good point. We'd have to look up, I, we, there is an events calendar online somewhere so we could see if there is any, but I can't think any off the top of my head. No. Yeah, I couldn't find any. Yeah. No, no, but if you have any... Actually, I think the ferries is a great idea and there's different ferries that will hit different populations. Yeah. For example, 3.30 ferry coming back from Bo from Horseshoe Bay, you're going to catch the, the high school students. The high school students. Yeah. Uh, first thing in the morning, 7.30, you've got the commuting adults. And high yeah. school students. And high school students and on that one. Students. But yeah, the yeah, first few so morning runs, you'll get the commuters. You um, could also, uh, this is Maureen, you could also go to the school and um, you'd be able to talk with young family uh, members. And you could try the Legion lunch and the Friday mm -hmm. night Legion mm -hmm. dinner. Yeah. And that would help get some uh, good the seniors. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. this is the type of information I need. So mm -hmm. there's the Legion lunch and there's the Friday dinner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then, okay, and then school, ferry. We're kind of just taking a day on the ferry and getting the different population. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that, makes sense. Sense. <laughs> that might be worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I would also be happy to arrange, this is Allison speaking, I'm happy to arrange, seeing if I can get a group of the more vulnerable population specifically at our house and with to meet with you. Oh, perfect. I would absolutely appreciate that. That'd be great. Yeah, I could probably get five or six folks. Um, okay. That'd be great. To, to specifically do that, hopefully. Yes, because so I, I think like it's so cats. important to reach populations that are difficult to reach. They are. Sometimes they get flipped over. On the other hand, if you hang out at the snug or behind the snug, we're going to find some of them. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, there's a couple coffee shops on island that you could probably, if you just spent, you know, morning there, um, you could probably get a good cross-section of people as well. Okay. Um, Did you want to talk about work? Workforce housing yeah. specifically? Yes, to meet some of the. Uh, so it's, it's Michael here. Um, so the one of, just one of the segments is that you might want to speak to some of the key employers here. Mm -hmm. yeah. there, there are not so many, and they could be easily, relatively, I mustn't say easily, they could be relatively easily organized. And they, they are people who are always looking for uh, rental accommodation. And I, I, and I, th I think they would be, a, 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 you know, amongst the many groups you're going to be talking to, I think that would be a, a meaningful group of people. Wonderful. We could potentially do a community economic development engagement. 
engagement session. Yeah. That is yeah. on workforce mm -hmm. housing. Yeah. yeah. And it's a great we idea. get very good turnout. Yeah, I think you would get very yeah. good turnout. It could be like a combined housing yeah. advisory and community. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. What would be the timeline on that then? So, well, it sounds like sometime in January, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm assuming it's not early January, so <laughs> we can maybe start organizing it in January. Yeah. Um, and the only other thought, sorry, Fritz has something. I'm just going to say one thing that came up, and it's just a data point. Um, I think in the business licensing, was it through that mechanism, we got numbers on full-time employees versus summertime employees, which I thought was interesting, or full and part-time. I can't yeah. remember. There were some numbers seasonal. there. Yeah, yes, or, and yeah. seasonal. Yeah. So there were some interesting numbers there as well that you could um, you could ask the employees about. Fritz, did you have a comment? Yeah, would the survey say anything about suitable locations? Um, the reason I'm saying it is maybe an assumption that everything has to be in the cove, but it would be interesting to see to which degree some distance from the cove or a long distance from the cove wouldn't actually make a difference. It would just provide more affordable housing. Yeah, it would be interesting. If that's in your scope, it would be perhaps an interesting question to ask about test the test the popularity, is that maybe what you're getting at Fritz, of, or, or the tolerance for density outside the cove? Is that well, yeah, what you're so getting it, at? Well, because it may, um, it may make it more feasible to build, right? So, for instance, like, if there's a better understanding where, where these forms of housing can be, and again, you, you step away for a second from your own judgments, right? And um, if it becomes clear that some of it can be at some or greater distance from the cove, mm -hmm. then, and it would, if it would be much easier, because the land values are different, the, the impact may be uh, much smaller, mm -hmm. then maybe it's a way to actually facilitate yeah. meeting the goals that the community has. Yeah, Michael, did you want to jump in? Well, yes, Sophie, I think that's a very good point for goals that conclude the survey or go through your total survey and not have asked that question uh, would be wrong because even, even, if it, even if it doesn't yield any, other, any great demand outside the code, I think that's one of the um, boxes that needs to be ticked rather than just leave it as a question unanswered. Uh, and so we, we deal, whatever comes out of it, we deal with the, we deal with the issue uh, and even if it's something we say we ask the question and no no interest or whatever, but we ask the question. Uh, I, I I would I think it's an excellent point and something that we uh, it's part of the circle that needs to be needs to be closed. Yes. Okay. Um, well, I'm thinking now that I should just um, I should create the survey this month and I'll send it to you all. I probably could send it next week. And then if you have time to review it before your next meeting in January, we could talk about it at that meeting. And I'll also try to make it to that meeting in person. If there's some other events that we can also have on the same day that are stakeholder engagement related, that way we can kill two birds with one stone. Um, yeah, so that could give us some time to really uh, comb through the survey and make sure that questions are appropriate for Bowen Island. That, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. um, we'll probably be discussing, and we can either do that now or at the end of our meeting, what our next meeting date will be, because we're typically the first Friday, but that won't. Oh, we need to change from Friday to So it sounds like we're going to be rediscussing the entire structure of our meetings and what dates they're going to be on. So we'll have to get back to you, probably we can get back to you later today about what that might be. And, um, and then I, yeah, if, if we can manage to schedule something on the same day, I understand the convenience. So. Um, Great. And that'll take a bit of time to schedule between the, the committees and stuff. So okay. I'm just working for Christmas. So that, <sighs> that sounds good. Okay. And, um, yeah, if, we could, if you all could um, get back to me about any events or um, ongoing information about how to engage, that'd be great. And then I was also going to ask, uh, well, any more questions surrounding that topic? Well, I guess my thing would be, is there any groups that you are um, lacking connection to? Like, we've sort of got a connection to vulnerable population, which is great. I think there's a pretty clear connection to the commuters, to maybe seniors. You'll get some mixed events at the, at the maybe the Legion dinner. Yeah. Um, is there anything you can see that's a, a glaring gap? Young families? Uh, no, not at this time, because I also have, uh, Daniel already sent me a list of contacts that I requested okay. um, for the major employers, for developers, for home builders. 
or a few other groups. So if anything comes up, may I email um, Steph to email the committee for help? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think so. And there's also, if we want for families and stuff, PAC, right? There's the Parent Advisory Committee. And I don't know if that's a good resource, but at least it's it's an organized committee that would have a representative that maybe you could um, tap a meeting of theirs. I'm not sure. But, uh, and oh, Family Place, Children's Center, if you want to get young families or families yeah, with young children. Um, yeah, there's different contacts there. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And we'll get your, your email, your contact details from, oh, we have it somewhere. Okay, great. Yeah, and um, any if anything else comes up, uh, let me know. And then um, if anyone is interested in talking to me one on one, I'm available for that too. Just uh, call me or send me an email. And then um, and I was hoping. Do, how much time do I have, Steph? Do I have some time? Are you trying to move on to the next agenda item? I think we have some time. Can we five or ten minutes? Okay. Uh, I just wanted to be respectful of your meeting time. So, are there any uh, contextual factors that you all, off the top of your head, think that I should be considering for Bowen Island as I'm looking through the data and considering later, I'll be considering with Ross um, policy recommendations and things like that? Um, I, I could speak to, to that. It's, it's more easy. One of the things that is sort of top of mind for me is the degree of mobility in our community. Mm. And if you look at the census data, the 2016 census, I think it's around about a 30% uh, turnover in terms of the, the actual people who live on, on, the, on the island. Wow. Um, since 2016, I'm, I'm not sure whether the mobility, the degree of mobility has increased or decreased. Mm. So I think that there may be a bit of a, a data gap there. Yeah. And that may affect some of the recommendations that we make. In particular, if we have um, an accelerating, accelerating degree of mobility, um, I'm not sure. Well, I think it makes it difficult to do midterm and long term uh, projections for a community. And I, I don't know how you address that for them data analysis uh, perspective. Yeah. So I think one of the responses that we'll ultimately get to the housing assessment is that many of the people who could have provided very good information about the homes that uh, they need, the re reasons why they're here, those people may already have left the island. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to... True. Just to There's any way to capture outgoing residents um, please let me know because that would also be helpful. The only thing that I've, I've thought of is, and I don't know whether they're able to make this um, information available, is turnover to the post office. Oh. Uh, mm. And then yeah, you, you might I'm not sure. Yeah. I can look into that. I wonder also on that same, same issue, I don't know if you're allowed to use Facebook or social media. But I suspect that quite a lot of people who have moved off the island might still be looking at our local Facebook sites, Bowen Island, everything else, as a way of sort of keeping in touch. Yeah. And if you were to say what it is that you're doing, especially if it was endorsed by this committee, people might even be willing to get in touch with you to say, we moved off because we couldn't afford housing or whatever. Right. Yeah. And we could help facilitate, we could help I facilitate I could, that. One or more of us could make posts on your behalf uh, invite people to get in touch yeah, or so something like that. Right. Yeah. Giving you an introduction essentially to the community yeah. and to that site. I think that's a great idea. If it's appropriate, which, yeah, to gather anecdotal, like, individual stories. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's actually, there could be a piece for that in the report. Um, it may be an appendix or it might be um, integrated, but I could definitely see that being valuable. Mm. Great. Yeah. Like that suggestion. If we were to gather a list of, say, 20 or 30 names of people who've moved off the island, is it feasible? Is it something you're even able to do is to get in touch with individuals? Um, so depending on the number, um, what I would do is um, definitely want to talk to some people one-on-one. -on -one. I have to parse out my time as mm -hmm. far as how much time we've allotted to the public engagement. But we have allotted a lot of time to it, and to tell you the truth, we always go above and beyond. At some number, we 
we would probably do a survey if it were to exceed a certain amount. Okay. But I definitely want to do a number of um, interviews. Okay. I just I just wanted to mention, Sophie, that we've just completed our island survey for 2019. Yeah, Daniel sent it to me. Great, so you've got that. Thank yeah, you. We have yeah very interesting data. Research. And you know, before I let you all go, I did want to mention right now, um, my colleague and I are writing up um, a proposal for Bowen Island to conduct a economic analysis. And this is something we did for the District of Souk because they're facing an affordability problem. And affordability, as you all know, is not only the price of the home, but the ability for people to make an income. Mm -hmm. And um, I've heard too, like we did a survey talking to Daniel, that there is a desire to work on the island mm -hmm. and um, a lot of the jobs are not there. So what the economic analysis does is it understands what are the sectors of employment, what is the capacity now and in the future, what is the capacity of existing employees. And so I think that would be really complementary to the affordability piece because understanding affordability, like I said, is income and employment is such a vital part of that. And that's outside the scope of the housing report. It's in the housing report, but it's not the main focus. So I'm going to be writing that up and sending that to Daniel. And then we can see if, if that's something that Bowen Island wants to do. Um, and just as a, another note from what we mentioned before, did Daniel, did you send the Birch Housing Survey? It. Okay, so we, I can send you Birch, uh, the nonprofit housing organization. We did a specifically a housing survey earlier in the year, so we have okay. a report on that. And um, uh, and I can probably we haven't done too much analysis. We didn't have the resources, so um, there probably could be some more information extrapolated from that survey yeah. as well. So yeah, Definitely. we could maybe work together. And I'll definitely get in touch with you directly. We can we can touch base one on one. Yeah, great. And I, I also saw that you all have been talking about secondary suites. I don't want to go into that too much right now, but that's something I want to talk more at length about because that might enter into the discussion in our final recommendations. It's definitely not the solution to affordable housing, but it's a complement of the housing diversity. So. Um, uh, yeah, at some point, I'd like to dive into that a little bit more about what your conversation has been. Okay. Well, you're certainly you're welcome to stay on the line. We're about to dive into, that's part of our next agenda point. So you're welcome Great. to stay on the line if you want to listen. But of course, these meetings are recorded as well. So if you didn't want to or didn't have time to stay on the line now, you could always go on to the website and watch the meeting later and listen to our discussion. Oh, oh great, great, that's perfect. I have a, a meeting in about 30 minutes that I have to prepare for. Yeah. Um, so I'll just do that, wonderful. Yeah. Excellent, thank you so much. Yeah, we thank We look forward you. to being in touch in the future. Yes, definitely. All right, okay. have a good one, everyone. Thank you. Thank so you. Bye. So bye. 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 Great, okay. I know we're meeting. We are yeah. getting there, and I think we're doing okay on time, aren't we? Perfect. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So um, I think the last thing, because everything else is information items. Is that? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then our discussion on the last meeting. We need to leave a few minutes at the end to discuss the, or sorry, next meeting dates. Um, so secondary suite by law review report. Okay. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I, I, yeah, I did my best. I really ran out of time this month, and I think Chris, you did as well. So um, what I've sort of got together is, um, and we have copies of it, don't we? So I just tried to put together a quick, the two, three pages, um, which you know could use a little people, but probably put some more um, uh, words or summary or, or analysis, but just tried to put together a brief report on what we had commented on secondary suites bylaw review because I think that's the most specific one that we need to comment on, and then um, and then I did them as appendices and I'm happy to discuss how um, it's formatted. Uh, but I wanted to make sure that we included the work that, that Fritz has done especially and that we worked on together on the land use bylaw review and um, the OCP review um, to make sure that that was in there if possible, and that's the part that um, I did not get a lot of time to edit. So I really just got a chance to kind of cut and paste into the different policies and documents. I filtered a little bit where there was some double up, but it really has not much more than that has been done. So um, so those appendices are not really um, 
I mean, we can look at them, but they haven't been really um, put together for um, to be issued or anything. Um, and I can't remember what our Daniel. What's our timeline for getting? Like, yeah, where are we at for for you needing this from us? I know we were pushing to get it yeah. done today, so. I mean, I, I tend to feel it's like the sooner it's done, the better. Yeah. I mean, I. So I went with the big plan use file update to the APC in yeah. November, I think, okay. and then looking for a committee to hold with council in the new year okay. to discuss okay. would be my time. All right, so we should try to get this done soon and then maybe circulate by email to, to get some sort of approval. I don't know if we can do that or, well, we'll establish our first meeting date in January if we can mm -hmm. try to do that, so. What do we need to do? Well, this is it, right? And I think we need to figure out what, what do we need to get to you for that review? Um, so we've got, I've got this quick summary. Maybe let's just go through it. So I've got the, um, this is this pretty, yeah. pretty done to me. Okay, so the three page one I feel is pretty done. So if we yeah. want to maybe just go through it, make sure I'm on the right that path and that I summarized it correctly. Um, and if we want to add anything. So at the beginning, uh, the preamble of our overarching goal, which we try to include in everything now. The summary, um, to assist council and staff with review of the secondary issue bylaw. We've reviewed and we make correcting changes below. Um, in the summary. Yep. Yeah. 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 Uh, the very last part of that, uh, I get lost. Facilitate development of the diverse housing options or community needs. Okay, could be that that just was a, you know, mm -hmm. stopped mid-thought. I'll and edit. That happens. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just that. You just, I'll be full okay, stop. so additionally to facilitate meeting our emerging goals, we have reviewed the OCP and LED and provided feedback on how these documents could be updated um, to not restrict but facilitate de uh, development of diverse housing options. Okay, period. Yeah. Okay, done. That's good. Okay, and then the next page, so this is where I've gotten specifically into um, the land use bylaw 3.54. I aligned the numbers. Um, and I could insert the actual read right. language because it's not that big. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. So that wouldn't be hard. I could just insert, you know, one this, and then here's our recommended change. That might yeah. be useful. Okay. So uh, insert. Excuse me. Yeah. Is this uh, report available to the public? Yeah, I've just included it on a revised agenda, and which will be published. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay. From land use bylaw. Okay. So I'll add that in. Um, it might be helpful with number one to mention that we have a rezoning in process that establishes that okay. SR that okay. zoning option. That, may, uh, that is, how do we say that? Because it's progress. not a, it, it, that's in progress. Um, in progress that may establish SR1. RS2F. SR, SR2F. What is the F? Zone variation number. F. It's just where we are in the alphabet. Is that like a commercial or? No. no. SR2 is the settlement residential to zone. Okay. And then the zone variation is F, and that just relates to. What's the number. Yeah. And that combo with G. Yes. Yeah. It goes like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll just, just make sure I've got that right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it just. Yeah. Nailed it. Nailed it. Yes. So, so the rationale for that one being, so this one is the idea is to consider allowing uh, one attached and one detached or two attached suites within one property. Uh, considerations that this should be controlled through a DP approval process. Sorry, I thought that was it. <laughs> uh, consider size limits, remaining a single entity because that's consistent with the whole idea of secondary suites. And then the rationale, um, and I think this comes a bit from what Fritz, some of the work that you did is, you know, you have those diagrams. It's like somebody could build a very large house and then they could have a, quite a large suite um, or they could have two smaller suites and really what is the impact of that. Um, if you consider, um, uh, do we add in there? Maybe we should add in there about, you know, water and sewer and parking and all of those and things have to be considered. It is there. It is there. Okay, great. Um, and so and it just gives flexibility to creating these diverse housing units. And, and also, and I kind of added this, gives flexibility for the owners throughout the life, because that's another thing that I think, you know, mm -hmm. it means when you have your bigger family, you can have more space in a smaller suite, and then when the kids move out, you can then have the two suites, and it's just all kind of providing more flexibility for people to stay in their homes or use them as they will over time. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and thank you. Yeah, got it in there. DP process would ensure adequate water, sewer, septic, as well as parking locations. So, okay. So with that one, everybody's kind of on par with that one. Great. So number two. <clears throat> um, and number two, so this is where we should have it written in there, shouldn't we? Um, I don't have it up. Sorry, so I should just refer to what number two is. Two is, in okay. addition to the parking requirement set out, at least one parking space must be provided from the lot. Oh, really? Yeah. That's number two? Yeah. Oh, I must have to look, because I, I renumbered these because I was looking at something. And they right, because that in, seems like that's four. Yeah, and they were different numbers, and I went, oh, that's weird, so I redid it. Um, at one point, we were looking at the bylaw, and we were looking at something yeah. that was in the land use bylaw. Yeah, and they'll be different. Like the 2008 the bylaw yeah. has been, like we amended it when we did detached secondary suites. Okay, we so that's what my mistake is. So I was looking at the old one. Now okay. it's, I've got it up in front of me. Okay, so I will reword okay. these. So number two is about parking. Um, and then I think this one was supposed to be about, oh, it addressed something else in the old one. Um, okay, so number two is parking, which I have down there at number four. So consider parking reduction flexibility, so this doesn't limit sweet creation. The rationale being some lots are small, have limited capacity for on-site parking. This should not limit the creation of secondary suites. Consideration being that this could be, could be controlled through a DP approval process, considering neighborhood parking needs and capacity, uh, possibly limit to locations close to the cove or transit routes, allow 50% um, compact car stall size, which I think was just amending the parking bylaw uh, that had a different number. Um, and then if parking included for suite, consider dedicating that for the rent, uh, for the tenant, because I think we'd heard some anecdotal stories of, of landlords yeah. taking over parking spaces, and all that stuff, so uh, as considerations. Um, and then number three in the actual land use bylaw is no bed and breakfast or commercial accommodation, and so um, we have that as number yeah, three. Um, and so we just say remove this clause and the rationale is operating with DMV and having a secondary suite are complementary uses. We should encourage secondary suites where possible. Parking requirements would still apply to ensure minimum neighborhood impact. Does that summarize it? Yeah, okay. Um, number four in the actual land use bylaw, a detached secondary suite shall not exceed a floor's area of, oh, that's the detached. Mm -hmm. um, we have, and then a secondary suite shall not exceed the floor space of 90. Okay, so again, I'll have to reorder this. So let's just look at my, keep on my report so we're not getting too confused. Um, so number five, yeah, remove the 90 square meter maximum size to align with new building code changes and then tied in with number six below, remove the 40% floor space limit and then the rationale being that those 90, 40 limits are based on the building code which has just been updated and I quickly looked at what those updates were and I think, do you remember, Daniel, they yeah. were... So yeah. they, I was looking at it this morning, because they, they, yeah, they, they straight up removed the total floor space of not more than 90 square meters, yeah. and they removed the less than 40%. Okay, so they did take those away. Like, okay. I had this document of the changes, and it's like, a, I was going to send it around, and then it's a 43-page PDF of, like, line by line changes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, but, yeah, but I think those are the big ones, <laughs> and it's interesting that yeah. that was our thinking, <laughs> and that that's actually what's been now reflected in the code. Yeah. So it, we're on the same path. So I think that makes total sense and to align with the new code and it allows flexibility and all that stuff. So I feel like that doesn't even need too much explanation. Um, Would the committee then say like put in a limit or no? Just like a secondary suite is just an enclosed. Yeah, a separate dwelling unit. I don't know if that's yeah. the right word, but a separate self-contained unit within a dwelling. Um, well, it goes back to either out prior to not. So for instance, in <coughs> Vancouver, all secondary suites are in a sense conditional, but if you make it outright, and you can simply do that, but it also goes back to that rental ready, I'm not sure if we have it in here, that rental, the requirement. Yes, it's not in this ready. portion, it's in the land use, I think it's okay, in the, like, the okay. appendix, yeah. yeah. But then the, because um, like if something is conditional, it's always a bit harder, right, to go yes. through the process, but if you would say that a rental suite up to a certain size is just allowed, mm -hmm. You know, outright, that means you don't, it doesn't need to be a view of impact 
on neighbors or anything like that. You just have to put, you just have to tick off the boxes, which means there's enough parking and there's a, you know. And then if you go larger than a certain area, then maybe it's a condition. It's just a thought, but I can yeah. is it true that there's no number at all, which makes it more actually harder to deal with? I mean you would probably get more opposition. Like if you say for a rental suite it stays at the nine, what I don't like about the 90, it's hard to divide in two. Because mm -hmm. 45 is not that much, right? Yeah. So if you say you make it, uh, you either say the 90 would present one suite, kind of, up to two or three bedrooms, and the person may divide it in two and therefore you're happy with the 90, or you raise that number somewhat. Mm -hmm. But this is more the question maybe for uh, Danielle, like with this process, be, is something that's more outright or conditional, how much of a difference is that? make in the whole application process. So could we, yeah. with this work, could we, after number six, say something like establish um, requirements for outright approval of secondary suites? I mean, that doesn't quite work, but that's the direction. And explore, maybe and explore conditional options that would incentivize other things. Because really that's what you want. When you do outright and conditional, it's because you're trying to incentivize them to do something else, right? Like you're saying, okay, if you just want to do what you want to do, do the outright and that's fine. But hey, if you want to do this, we'll give you some extra area, we'll give you so some extra height, we'll do yeah. whatever, right? Like that's the, what are we trying it's, to incentivize? It's, it's in a way a, a, um, a form of two tiers only in a sense, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just to simplify the process for people who want to do something that's straight for the boxes yeah. from yeah. the get-go. Yeah. yeah. Explore um, incentives for conditional. So I think what I'll write is establish requirements for outright approval of secondary suites and explore incentives for a conditional. Uh, explore possibility. Maybe explore possibility of creating or, or, or a conditional building to incentivize. But increase floor space for for rental, right? But then it has the bonus has to be, I guess if there's a bonus, it's really the, the total square for each of the um, Well, and I guess because we're, we're wanting to incentivize um, more housing that the community needs, right? Like that's kind of what we're getting at. So I don't know what that looks like, and I don't think we have to have the answer right now in this recommendation, but it's like conditional zoning should be explored. Let me give you one example. If you have the uh, outright for a house and it sits at whatever, let's give a number, okay? Let's say it will be 2,400. Yeah. But if you put in a rental ready suite, you can have 3,600. Right. I mean, just like as a four, it will be a formula, right? Yeah. Then guess what? Everybody puts in these rental ready suites. That yeah. doesn't mean they have to rent them, but yeah. the potential is there. So I think, and this is explored further later in like in, in the, one of the appendices, which isn't quite ready yet, but. Um, I think maybe if we just make mention here, like yeah. please see appendix whatever for the discussion of, you know, conditional network zoning and rental ready, you know, incentives or something like that. Does that yeah. help? Because I want to, my incentive yeah. in, or my goal in this is I want to keep this report simple and clear. Because yeah. I think that's what council wants. <laughs> they're, and Daniel wants, right? Like they're looking at the secondary suite file review, they want to know exactly what we have to say about each point. But we have all these other great ideas and thoughts. <laughs> So I want to make sure they're captured, but that they don't muddy the water so that it's clear purpose. So I think maybe what I'll say is please see appendix whatever, uh, re, you know, outright, conditional, and rental ready ideas, whatever, something like that. Okay? Yeah. Uh, and then, um, oh, I think that's it. So I think, yeah, maybe number seven and eight were, were, they're from the old one. They were like, you know, it has to comply with right. the building code. It was like, yeah. yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they were building code, so I think that was why there's no change, no change. So I will reorder these looking at the proper um, current land use bylaw. And then, and yeah, that's why I couldn't find the lot. So I thought, put down the bottom. So in the current land use bylaw, there is the. Um, so there's a minimum lot size for detached secondary suite. So I think that's why I'll keep it. Is this a review of the 
secondary suite bylaw or the detached secondary suite bylaw or both? I'm going to see it as a review of the accessory residential use regulations in our land use bylaws. So they okay. were both amendment bylaws yes. that amended yes. the okay. land use so, bylaw. So. so I'm going to say review of. Can you say that again? Accessory, <laughs> what is it? Accessory, accessory residential use. use regulations in the land use bylaw. So we draft Well, um, I'm making notes in my word file with this. Mm -hmm. So, do we want to try and like? Get my note was just saying that the discussed edits and comments and they and they were noted. Yeah. Because then what we could aim to do is like we could work in to bring to the January meeting. Like uh, a report that's like it looks like a, like in our staff report that has a recommendation that something like the Housing Advisory Committee, you know, recommend council direct staff make the proposed changes to the whatever yeah. blah blah blah, and then there's a report okay. that goes with it. Yeah. Um, okay, so we can do that for the January month. Yeah. Okay, so I think we've captured it for this part, okay. and then um, we've only got about twelve no. minutes left. Yes. Yeah. We can try and quickly. I don't think we'll do it justice, but we can try and quickly go through. Um, the other bits, and and then maybe that's really what we're going to have to work on for the January meeting is those appendices. Um, and we are. Uh, could we bring them up on the screen? Maybe? Uh, let's see. Appendix. Let's start with A. Um, With the examples that Nicolich gives them, yeah. sponge. Why were those projects identified? I had it, uh, those zoning, those examples of zoning, um, I had it in there because in our uh, land use bylaw review, I think, uh, one of them was to consider creating cluster housing pocket neighborhood zoning. And then, um, so actually, yeah, we bring that up. Here we go, it's the first one. Uh, so create cluster housing pocket housing slash pocket neighborhood zoning, and then see the appendix for examples from other communities. So that's why it was included. Okay. They have some there's some interesting examples from Gibson's, Maple Ridge, and Squamish, I think. Um, and so the rationale being uh, cluster housing development on select lots and established neighborhoods would insert gentle density and provide diverse housing options. Those in larger homes would have the option to downsize and remain in their existing neighborhoods, maintaining their social connections support systems. I could add a line in there about, um, you know, also for just providing, you know, diverse, possibly more affordable um, for, you know, a whole mix of people, not just downsizing people. Mm -hmm. but, um, okay. Um, so the, the considerations would be infill and select existing neighborhoods create smaller ground-oriented housing options. They could be strata or rental or similar to a trailer park model with pad lease, so these are all considerations. Uh, could include prefabricated homes, tiny homes, manufactured homes, um, and with some quality requirements to be considered. Uh, consider a, a select number per neighborhood, because I think that would be important. I think people would like, you know, mm -hmm. it's not saying blanket rezone so everybody can build six or eight units on each lot. It's more like, hey, pick one neighborhood, maybe, and, and what I kind of said is consider an EOI for a pilot project. So you put it out there and say, hey, this is something we're considering. Somebody in one of the further out neighborhoods says, I have a piece of plan, I'd love to do this. And you just kind of do it in little, you know, it's the idea that it's just gently inserted into neighborhoods. It's not, you know, taking over neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. um, just to get, again, because outside the code, I think it's based to say virtually all of the housing in all the neighborhoods is single family. So this would would give the option of something different and, and potentially more affordable. Um, so that was number one. And again, these were, um, this is the, the, a general review of the land use bylaw. Um, so number two, consider putting out an EOI expression of interest uh, for a pilot project to create affordable diverse housing options for new zonings. So I think job space is the one industrial zone we talked about. Okay. Um, it could be on community land. It could be as infill in existing neighborhoods. Uh, the rationale being rezoning, um, rezoning is oh, sorry, I'm missing is rezoning is an intimidating and cost prohibitive process for many. To encourage the development of zoning, we identify as a community need. The municipality could partner with existing landowners to create new desired zonings. So just as an idea. So mm -hmm. it's, it's taking a more, it's actually, it's interesting thinking about what Fritz was saying earlier in our discussion. 
it's taking a more proactive stance on it and putting it out to the community to say, hey, we've identified these needs as zonings. Um, would anybody like to proactively partner with us to create those as opposed to just sitting back and waiting for people to come to you? It goes back to the old-fashioned invitation. Do you remember yeah. the early meetings? That yeah. was a whole thing to generate. Was yeah. You're issuing an almost issuing an invitation. And yeah, yeah, and I think it goes what Fritz was overarchingly saying is we should take a vision of what we want to see and then figure out how to how to get it out from the community. Yeah. Yeah. And this is one avenue um, of doing it. So the desired zonings being maybe these cluster pocket neighborhoods, maybe new co-op developments, job space. I don't know if there's any others that people have ideas on, but we can add more examples in there. Um, maybe just attached housing too might be um, something. Um, just as, as versus the single detached housing that we have. Uh, so we've got number three. Uh, consider multiple accessory residential uses on larger properties, and this was something that Fritz brought up when he did all those various diagrams. <clears throat> so the rationale, oh, I didn't finish this rationale, sorry, that was obviously I got caught mid-sentence. Could you scroll down a little bit to number, sorry. no, that's okay, to number three. Um, this was where I stopped mid-sentence, I'm sure. Um, so <laughs> the, the idea being that homes on very large properties, as Fritz has kind of shown, um, you know, they could potentially have, especially now maybe a very large suite, or they could build a three or 4,000 square foot home, but maybe we could create some incentives to, to have them build a smaller home and several um, accessory buildings, something like that. Um, it's that something about rural lifestyle that I think will come up when you go through the OCP and the Legends Bylaw. Yeah. Because somewhere it says from, you really wonder how many people can afford a rural lifestyle because they have to buy 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 a lot, which is not doable. And then you think from, well, um, you make some little cluster of people who want to be in a rural area and maybe do have plots on a larger area, but it's just not almost more like you can insert it and it doesn't really change any of the mm -hmm. character and makes these rural lands more vibrant, you know, like yeah. actually there's some and can be completely sustainable. Okay, so I will work on the rationale for that one, um, <clears throat> but the um, considerations being it could be controlled through a DP approval process, specifically to address water, septic, parking, neighbors, impacts, all of those kinds of things, and it could be done by rezoning to allow on properties outside water districts and over a certain size. I think that was a couple of the considerations we talked about. Um, so number four, find ways to encourage and incentivize the creation of, so secondary suites, including rental ready, uh, where a secondary suite is roughed in and fire separations in place with only minor renovations, for example, installation of kitchen fire and doors, uh, needed to create suite in the future, um, more public land parks and trails, and more land for community housing for nonprofit development. Okay. Uh, number five, Consider new zoning mechanisms. This is where that um, outright and conditional comes in. Um, so outright, that certain uh, this allows that certain buildings go straight to building permit if designed within given, uh, maybe I'll say not limits, but parameters. Um, and then conditional allows on approval, possibly through a DP, certain additional bonus attributes for the building. So additional floor space, additional height, setback relaxations, etc to encourage other desired uses, such as secondary suites, clusters, and <coughs> those kinds of things. Uh, and, I, and this is where we didn't get, so Fritz may have, and we're running short on time, I'm gonna wrap up in a minute, but this is kind of where it got to, I haven't quite edited everything, because Fritz has a lot of information, and, and I've got a bit more to go through. So if everybody's kind of like, yes, we're sort of vaguely on the right track to getting some sort of report coming together, and then Fritz will have to, we'll have to work to edit a little more, and um, we can probably do that by email, and try to get something totally cohesive back to the community by January. Um, okay, mm, good. All right, we'll keep plugging away. Just one question. Yeah. Um, um, well, we've always looked at the municipal tools for increasing the diversity of housing we have done. Yeah, that's the number. Yeah. One of the things that she did that I thought was really helpful was she talked about um, this particular tool will require it's like effort of introducing an mm. impact. Mm. I, I don't know if that, that would be possible with these points, but for yeah. council, it okay. might be, this is a lot. For yeah. council, it might be useful to have a sense of um, prioritizing as far as impact on 
reaching our goals. Mm -hmm. So um, have some, some priorities. It's so you're sort of saying also showing how hard it might be to accomplish this. Yeah, it's it's not just it's it's not just priorities. It's okay. if you do this, it's gonna have a big impact, a moderate impact, so very little impact. Plus but level of effort easy, and impact, mm -hmm. etc. Yeah. For each. That kind of if they can get it. I'll go back and look at Jada's um, uh, report like presentation too, because I did that once, so maybe we were going back and looking at it again. Um, and I don't know if it's possible, but uh, it might help. But at least for some, we might build a flag, and um, and maybe yeah, going through it, we kind of go. These are here. These are the top ones we think you should look at. Here's some other thoughts, but these are the ones we really think you should focus on and do. Um, you know, things like if we wanted to, the rental ready to me seems pretty simple and straightforward. And again, maybe it's reasonably low effort for a moderate return, you know, moderate impact. So okay, we can look at that. Okay, great. So I want to. We've only had a few minutes left. What's the deal with t meeting dates and times and stuff? Stuff. So can we can we do a Wednesday morning? Okay. Um, I'm fairly flexible. I'm, <laughs> I um, I actually can. my schedule is fairly flexible, so um, I can probably make the that. Morning work. Is the morning this is a morning. The morning is the morning. Okay. I think we added. What about? I just need to check. Yeah, your schedule. I'm, I'm not, I have your schedule memorized, and you're free. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just no, the, the um, Metro Parks needs some Wednesday mornings. Oh, okay, so we can just pick. Is that a monthly? Yeah. On a certain Wednesday, so we yeah. can just pick a different Wednesday. Yeah. Is it like a third Wednesday or the second Wednesday? It's morning? usually the second Wednesday, but they haven't released. Or they hadn't released their meeting schedule. See, I can make the I can make the Wednesday because very often if I'm downtown, yeah, I put two days together. I'm sure I, if I'm staying overnight, and if I normally have to stay overnight, it's invariably sorry, it's a selfish, but it, it's invariably on a Wednesday or a Thursday. So if I'm, I'm attending something on a Thursday night, I put the the Thursday afternoon or the Thursday and a Friday together, so I'm not yeah. yo yoing backwards and forwards. Yeah, yeah, now if there's a Wednesday morning. I would do, you know, because if I then I could easily leave after the meeting if I have to to go downtown for Wednesday. That would not be, a, that would not be an issue. And as I said, I realize I'm speaking somewhat. For no, that's okay. We all have to put in our voice. Yeah. So that's your thing. Is there any other? Maureen's just double checking. Yeah, it, it looks like anything but the uh, second Wednesday. Okay. Do you have a suggestion? I was just going to the second on Wednesday. Okay, the date. Does um, the first okay. Wednesday work? No, with. No, we do the, the first, first Wednesday, but we wouldn't be able to do that for January. No, we want to because January the first. Oh is right, so it would be the. But could we bump it to? Oh, the second wouldn't work because that I don't. I don't know how will be in January. Okay, okay, so we'll do so for January, January. we do the eighth, uh -huh. and then ongoing we do the first Wednesday. Sure. Okay, if that works for people. Okay. Oh, let's put, let's put it to the test. Let's just put it to the test and see. Yeah, no, scale yeah. through the calendar and see. Um, and I'm just going to say, I'm already working over Christmas, so I'm trying to get agendas out and prepare okay. material for you for meetings that are happening at the beginning of the month. Okay. Yeah. Normally. Yeah. So we're saying, so if I, it, it, sorry, we're saying the first first Wednesday, okay? And January. I'm just putting it in general. general. The first Wednesday, except January is an exception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just looking right now. Um, and then just an FYI, I'll be away in April. So um, yes, I well. won't meet, or we can figure out if somebody else wants to chair. Um, huh? Yes, on the way January and February, yes. Okay. Okay, so, so part of our first meeting of the year is um, voting on chair and voting on schedule. So we can okay. do that. Okay, if, if, if by any chance, and I, I think it's great to put these dates in, but I, I, I think it makes sense. We, we, as, as we do on a revolving basis, we look ahead. And if, if for one particular month, for whatever reason, there's some some special stuff going on. Mm -hmm. you know, we should have the flexibility to say, hey, for this month, we might. Oh, for sure. I think we do that. And, but yeah, it's nice to have it in the calendar so that it's. Could I also pass on a parting piece of information once you've mm -hmm. you agreed these dates? Yep. Go ahead. In all the good work that we're doing, with the express intention of creating more long-term residential accommodation. Could we, in our wording, please be sensitive to the fact that a lot of people are concerned that we're actually creating accommodation, but not necessarily long-term accommodation, rental accommodation. Mm -hmm. We're actually facilitating a bigger 
Airbnb one yes. no matter what. And so I'm asking for because to head this off of the past, yeah. I realize our genuine intentions are to create diverse accommodation, long more long term rental accommodation. For residents. For I residents. That maybe that's what what is what is that. of concern out there is that yes, we are creating these spaces for people to come and live in. Yeah. But how are we actually ensuring that all this good work that we're doing and working towards is not going to fall prey? And it's one of the reasons that I think both both Alice and I didn't vote against this. We, were, we said, look, we need to have much more discussion. Please, if, if, if in our phraseology that we bear in mind that what we do is for the long term, but if it's easily sidestepped, and you know how people work, Daniel, take out a kitchen, do this, da 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 da. Then please. it becomes Airbnb. So okay, I'm just asking I'm just asking Robin, please, nothing more for an awareness. Of anything you can do to reassure folk that this is the express purpose mm -hmm. and the express purpose is not to allow this. That would be helpful. Having queues of people standing out here mm -hmm. Really worried that what we're doing is just increasing a sort of tourism, uh, being, mm -hmm. call it what you like, market. So I'm just asking, please, oh, yeah. can we fill so that in? Two quick comments. Could we step at, so the agenda for the next meeting, we'll have those things you said, the, um, you know, electing the chair, schedule, we'll do a strategic sort of planning brainstorming session. Mm -hmm. And I think in that we should include a, a review of our terms of reference to make sure that they're still applicable. Are there any changes we want to maybe ask council to make? And I think it could be part of that to make it clear that there are. And the second thing is that the little preamble that I want to put at all of our comments and our recommendations, I I've just added, so Thank could you. we say, as the Housing Advisory Committee, our overarching goal is to encourage the creation of more diverse, long-term housing options for residents of the community, yeah. with Thank emphasis you. on low and middle incomes. Does that yeah. make it clear? No, it, anything, yeah, it it all clear. these wordings yeah. combined yeah. build a picture. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're, part, we're I dealing with works. perception out there. People are not going to go through this with the same in Utah as I. They tend to look yeah. at it quickly. It's 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 sound by its stuff. Yeah, so and that's why I want to include that overarching goal at the top yeah. of anything. Great. That we give it's, it's a sensitivity. Yeah. So I'd also be interested in looking into how do other communities communities regulate that. Well, I think a lot of it's the short-term rental yeah. bylaw that we're going through, and right. I don't want to get into that discussion because we will just yes. keep going. So I'm going to wrap up the meeting, and yeah, if anybody wants to sit and chat, we can chat about that more. But I, yes, one thing we'll before you do, yeah. um, it's my intention to send this out again Great. with the yellow marking because okay. it just disappeared and it yeah. doesn't read well without it. Okay. And then the other one, I don't know how. So if you're going to read stuff, maybe wait for that. That's the OCP okay. uh, markup and the LUB. Mark up again. I think it's probably better to wait with reading it because okay, with the in the next week or so, I, okay. I find some more time and try to do it. Okay. The the idea is that it, in in the yellow it marks parts that we think in the end, right? Yeah. Not, not myself, but as no, a committee. No, but we as a committee. Yeah, need that it needs to be addressed. Yeah. Then the red is intended to be. Um, this is why. Right. And then the green is intended to be, this is what we think you should do. And okay. that has to be consistent with all those reports. Yeah, and I think the color is critical then yeah. for us to do it. So good. Okay, so okay. that's an action item for Fritz to send that out. Gotcha. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to show you turn 11.34. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you, Robin. And happy holidays.